please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the first scripture reading that Pastor Wilmer just read for you. I share with you today at verse 2. God said to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. So therefore arise, go over this Jordan River, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to you. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. There is a disease that's going around today. And this disease is killing dreams. It's killing hopes. And it's ruining marriages and families. The disease that I'm talking about is called I can't. I can't. This disease attacks our bodies. Many people are saying, I can't stop from taking those drugs. This disease attacks our job. Many people are saying, I can't keep this job. This disease is attacking our marriages. Many people are saying, I can't forgive them. This disease is attacking our spiritual lives. Many people are saying, I can't believe in a God who allows that to happen. Here in the Word of God before us this morning, Joshua could have suffered from this same disease. The Bible here tells us that Moses had just died, and God asked Joshua to take over the leadership of the people of Israel. Joshua could have said, God, I can't do it. It's too much for me. I just can't do it. I mean, there was no one in the world like Moses. When the people of Israel were slaves to the Egyptians, it was Moses who went to the Pharaoh, to the leader of the Egyptians, to ask for the people's freedom. When the people of Israel came up to that Red Sea, and they didn't know what to do, it was Moses who prayed to God for what they should do. When the people of Israel were complaining of being hungry and of being thirsty, it was Moses who prayed to God to ask for help. You'll remember it was Moses who went up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments from God himself. And Moses was the one who was in the presence of God every day. As the Bible tells us, God spoke to him every day. Wow. There was no one who meant more to these people of Israel than Moses. Can you even imagine how Joshua must have felt when God asked him to take over for Moses, to take over the leadership of these people of Israel. How was Joshua going to possibly do that? But God simply said to him, get up and take over. Moses was dead, but God was still alive. So get up, Joshua. Don't be afraid. Take over. Now Joshua had a lot of reasons to say to God, I can't. I can't do it. By now, the people of Israel numbered about 2 million people. That's a lot of people to lead. And these people of Israel, they didn't know anything about fighting enemy nations. They didn't know anything about being in a war. And they were against some really wicked and cruel nations. The nations around them, 
they were truly wicked. These nations, they sacrificed babies in their worship services. They worshiped many false gods. They practiced witchcraft. They practiced all kinds of wild sexual orgies. They were a wicked people. It sure seemed like Joshua didn't have a chance to lead the people of Israel into that new land. But look at what God said to him here this morning. God said, Joshua, get up and go over the Jordan River and live in the land that I am giving to you. Did you catch that? God said, live in the land that I am giving to you. The people of Israel were not going to have to defeat their enemies on their own. The people of Israel were not going to have to earn this promised land. God said that he was going to give them the promised land. God had already decided how it was all going to be. And look at what the Bible says Joshua did. Joshua said to God, yes. Yes, God, I will lead your people. And then God gave to Joshua and the people of Israel their inheritance. Yes, that's what the promised land was. It was their inheritance from God. God simply gave it to them. You realize that you have an inheritance from God as well? Most of the time when we think of an inheritance, we think of uh, parents, grandparents dying and giving us something, right? Well, this that God was giving to his people was different than what he is giving to us. He gave them land. But he's giving us a different inheritance. Your inheritance from God comes through your trust in Jesus. Through your trust in Jesus, who died on a cross and then rose from the dead for you, your inheritance now is eternal life with your God in heaven. Wow. Heaven is yours, and you didn't do anything to get it. You didn't fight for it. You didn't earn it. God just gave it to you through your trust in Jesus. What an inheritance you have from God. So you see, these really are your glory days. These really are the greatest days of your life. Let me explain it this way. You are not fighting for victory. That victory over sin and death has already been won by Jesus for you. But you are fighting from victory. In the wilderness of life on this earth, you're always trying to please God, right? But in heaven, you're going to be right there in the presence of God every day. Sometimes on this earth, you doubt that God really is around you. You wonder if he's really there. But in heaven, you're going to feel that presence of God every day. You're going to be seeing your God every day since you have won that victory over sin and death. The inheritance of heaven from your God is yours right now. So why do you worry and stress so much? Why do we go through so much worry? Well, here are two possible reasons. First, you just don't understand your inheritance. Remember, you're not fighting for some victory. You're not fighting for heaven. It's already been won for you. You are fighting from victory. You already have your inheritance of heaven through your trust in Jesus. Sin and death have already been defeated. The battle has been won. You're headed 
for heaven. The second reason we worry and stress so much is probably because we just don't believe we really have this inheritance. That was the problem with the people of Israel years ago, wasn't it? The people didn't really believe that God was going to just give them their promised land. They didn't believe it. The glory days for the people of Israel could have started 40 years earlier if they would have just trusted their God. But they chose to doubt God. They chose to be afraid. And their lives were a mess for 40 years. Don't make that same mistake in your life. Joshua here didn't make the mistake. He believed that God would give to him and to the people of Israel their promised land. And so he did what God told him to do to occupy that land. And then, then they got to enjoy their glory days in this promised land of Canaan. Do the same thing in your life. Receive your inheritance of forgiveness and heaven from your God. You don't have to do anything by your own abilities to get them. Trust that God can and will do that for you. You can forgive anyone around you easily because God is there to help you. Oh, you can't do it on your own. It's hard to forgive people who really hurt you, but you now can do it with God's help. You can't get rid of all your sins by yourself. You can't help but having sinful feelings of anger and of complaining in your life. But God can help you to overcome your sins. So make this mental change from the wilderness of life on this earth to the promised land of heaven. The wilderness mentality is always going to say to you, I am weak and I am getting weaker all the time. But the promised land of heaven mentality is saying to you, I am weak, but I am getting stronger every single day. The wilderness mentality is saying to you, these days are really difficult, and I don't know how I'm ever going to get through them. But the promised land mentality says to you, these really are my glory days, and God's going to help me to get through anything. Imagine what would happen if more Christians started living in their inheritance. Well, those who are lonely would find comfort in their God and in their gift of heaven rather than in drugs or in alcohol. Struggling couples would find strength through talking to God in prayer rather than in continually being angry with each other. Children would consider it a blessing to have Christian parents who love them and who bring them to church and to Sunday school. What a better world it could be. Remember the great words that the Apostle Paul spoke years ago in the book of Philippians in the Bible, chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Jesus who gives me the strength. You see, the days of I can't are gone. The days of being afraid to do anything are gone. God has given you a great inheritance that no one can take away from you. So instead of saying, I can't so much, start saying, God can. God can. It'll make all the difference in your life. Today, God wants you just to get up and to start living in your glory days. Start living in the hope and the comfort of forgiveness and eternal life in heaven. With God's help, you can do it. God bless you. Amen.
Let's now stand and join together in the next hymn of praise.